on this stuff makes my blood boil someone just sent this to me church of saint agatha in sicily was desecrated it's the second time something like this has happened uh they sent me photos and i'm going to walk you through them uh this church saint agatha santa agatha um, I looked it up. I couldn't find much about it. Uh, I did find some people on a tourist site. And they said, here's one spot here. Uh, you should definitely check out this city in Sicily. The city is Cantalinaceta. Probably said that wrong. Uh, one review says, just to peek at this magnificent church. It's simply stunning. There was a service going on, which I didn't want to disturb, but it's definitely worth a look if you are in the area. So it's a historic church named after St. Agatha. I believe St. Agatha was from Sicily. So obviously a devotion there. Um, let's just go through the pictures real quick. So here is um, an altar. You can see that they broke into it. I'm not sure if the relics were there Uh in some churches, they actually do place the relics inside um, what we might call a mannequin. It's probably not the right word. Um, it's to signify that relics and martyrs are buried under the altar. You read about this in Revelation chapter 5, that the martyrs are underneath the altar. It's a biblical notion. Um, so sometimes the relics are placed in the altar. Sometimes there's just a statue of the saint underneath the altar. But you can see that they broke in. They broke off the glass. Uh, and disrupted um, this statue or perhaps even the relics. Regardless, this is an altar of the Catholic Church, and they've desecrated an altar. Shame on them. There is a hell. People that do these things and do not repent, they will go to hell forever and ever. Jesus Christ says the fire does not end, and the worm that gnaws, which is the worm of conscience, never ceases. This is for real, people. You go in and desecrate, the statue of St. Agatha. St. Agatha is a great saint in the early church for purity, sexual purity. If you struggle with purity, I recommend that you invoke the saints who are known for their purity. You know, say, if you're tempted uh, in purity, say, St. Lucy, St. Agnes, St. Agatha, St. Philomena, pray for me. St. Joseph, pray for me. So they desecrated this altar. That's one. The thing that breaks my heart and makes me want to go on a crusade wearing armor and bearing the Red Cross is this picture right here. I'm sick of it. Desecration of the Eucharist. These heathens, godless people inspired by the devil himself, desecrated the altar of God, broke into the tabernacle, and look at our Lord Jesus Christ in the most blessed sacrament of the altar, thrown onto the floor. Let's just make an, an act of reparation now. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Nomini Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. This needs to stop. We need cameras. We need guards. We can't let this happen to our Lord Jesus Christ. These people who did this are going to go to hell. They need to repent. You do not desecrate the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. We Catholics, we believe that when the priest holds a little wheaten, we call it a host, little wheaten, it's a circle. When he holds that and he bows over the altar and he says traditionally in Latin, hoc est enum corpus meum, this is indeed my body, that that wheat, that unleavened bread, becomes the body of Jesus Christ. Truly, it is truly the body of Christ. All the accidental or incidental properties like the taste, the smell, the, 
the sight of it, the color of it, all that remains. But miraculously, in its essence, in its substance, it is truly Christ. And the same with the grape wine. When he says over the chalice full of wine with a little bit of water in it, this is the chalice of my blood, etc. It transubstantiates into the blood of Christ. So to throw the host on the ground like this is to throw Christ on the ground. That's how we Catholics see this. That's the true reality of what's going on here. So this is a horrible, horrible desecration that's just happened in Sicily at the church of St. Agatha. Let me bring in a few more pictures here that I was sent. All right, we also have this. Let me take this one off. This is just a kneeler that had an image of Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary. It was broken off and thrown on the ground. A desecration. If you honor an image of Jesus or of Mary, you honor Jesus or Mary. Just like if you honor the flag of America, you honor America. Period. So if you dishonor a flag of America, you dishonor America. And if you dishonor an image of Jesus... You dishonor Jesus. If you dishonor a statue or an image of Mary, you dishonor the mother of God. Period. Facts. Religious facts. Here's another one. Nope, I did that one. Let's see. Oh, yeah. This is just, just a close-up. God, God have mercy on us. It's amazing that God just doesn't nuke the whole world. All he does for us he sends his son to die for us, to be crucified for us. And then this is how we humans repay him. He gives us the gift of the Eucharist. People throw it on the ground like dirt. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. So, I've said this before. I'll say it again. I feel like I repeat it myself sometimes on these videos. But I know not everybody watches all the videos, so I have to do it. There are three phases of persecution. Phase one. They attack statues, symbols, signs, Bibles, all those things that are signif signifiers of the one true Christian religion. That's phase one of persecution. It happened at the French Revolution. It happened in the 10 persecutions under the Roman Empire. It happened at the Reformation. Phase two, they attack the churches and they attack, of course, the Blessed Sacrament. They disrupt our masses, our services. And then phase three, is they attack the people. First, they attack the clergy, the bishops, the priests, the deacons, the religious, and then they start to kill just the lay people. Those are the three phases. Symbols and signs, phase one. The churches, phase two, we're seeing churches burned down. Phase three, the people. That's how it works. I'm letting you know, so when it comes to a town near you, you know how to gauge the threat, because it is... On the, it's on the rise. It's on the increase. All right, well, we're going to close in prayer. And uh, I'd like to invite everyone to please pray the Ave Maria with me, the Hail Mary, to pray uh, in reparation for what's going on in the world, to strengthen ourselves, to be faithful to Christ, uh, that we will protect our churches, protect our sacraments, protect one another, protect our bishops and our priests. But if it comes to it, and we have to make the decision between life here on earth in honoring God and confessing Christ before men, we confess Christ and we join the rank of martyrs. If it comes to that, maybe hopefully it won't, but if it comes to that, that we would be full of grace and virtue to be worthy to stand up as a witness for Christ, even unto the shedding of blood. Oremos. Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in molieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu, Iesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et ora mortis nostre. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Well, everybody, read that Bible every day. Pray the rosary every day. The Bible on beads. If you don't pray the rosary every day, you're not on the team. And remember our Lord Jesus Christ said, you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless, Godspeed, and please ask God to have mercy on us all.